In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whom truly to know is eternal life, teach us to know your Son, Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life, that we may follow the steps of your holy apostles Philip and James, and walk steadfastly in the way that leads to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us, with all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things in earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, happy are those whose way is blameless. Happy are those who walk in the law of the Lord, who seek him with our whole heart, who also do no wrong but walk in his ways. 
Happy are those whose way is blameless. You, O Lord, have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Happy are those whose way is blameless. If I keep my eyes fixed on all your commandments, I shall not be put to shame. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. Happy are those whose way is blameless. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. St John's Gospel, like the proverbial football match, is a game of two halves. Up until chapter 12, Jesus engages in a very public ministry, openly teaching and preaching throughout Galilee and Judea, and his divine nature is revealed through a series of signs or miracles. No one who has eyes to see nor ears to hear can be left in any doubt that Jesus is the light, the one long promised, who has now in God's time come. That Jesus is life, life with a capital L. Water is made wine, thousands are fed from nothing more than a very modest picnic, the sick are healed, and even the dead are raised to life. For those who do have eyes to see, and ears to hear, 
the long promised kingdom is at last glimpsed in and through the builder carpenter from Nazareth. But from chapter 13 on, the second of the two halves, John portrays Jesus withdrawing from the crowds. And what he says, he says now only for the benefit of those who have come to accept him as God's Messiah, his disciples, and those who will come to believe through their testimony in the years to come. We move, if you like, from the public gospel to the private gospel, from public proclamation to intimate domestic instruction. Jesus' teaching moves from the here and now of first century Palestine to what will come after the final and greatest of all the signs that reveal exactly who Jesus is, the crucifixion at Calvary. And it is from this private teaching that our Gospel reading this morning comes on this feast of Philip and James. Jesus telling his disciples and us, as those who come to believe through their testimony, about the things that are to come. What he has spoken in parables, he now tells them plainly. Whilst he was with his disciples, there was no need for Jesus to speak to them about such things, about times of persecution and trouble, about inevitable rejection and betrayal, about what Dietrich Bonhoeffer was to call the cost of discipleship. Whilst he was with them, Jesus did not need to tell the disciples about the promised Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who would supply all of their needs. So, as he begins the process of taking his leave of his disciples, Jesus makes a promise, a promise that they will not be alone, that they have nothing to fear, that Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life, will not leave his disciples bereft, comfortless. He will not abandon them to their inevitable fate, even if they will, at the end, abandon him. As he prepares to return to the Father, Jesus promises that he will always be with his disciples and that he will be with those who will come after them and who will join them in following the way of the cross. Indeed, that Jesus will be with them as the very breath of their very being. Jesus promises Thomas and Philip and James, and he promises us, that a life lived in the power of the Comforter will be a life which gives glory to God, no matter what challenges it faces. So as Jesus prepares to return to his Father, he promises those who live in him and through him and by him everything they need to go on living. Everything they need to go on dying, deaths which will glorify the Father and give life to the world, just as his life and death glorify the Father and give life to the world. The lives and the deaths that Thomas and Philip and James will live and die. As we move now through the days of Easter in the Lord's Resurrection, and begin to look forward to Ascension Day in a few weeks' time, and to Pentecost, which lies beyond that, may the promised Comforter Spirit dwell in us and with us, emboldening us as the Spirit strengthened and protected and led Thomas and Philip and James, 
as we explore ever more deeply what it means to live the resurrection and to follow in the way, the truth and the life. Alleluia. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray now for the church and for the world and let us thank God for God's goodness. We pray for the continuing witness of this and every parish church for our members of staff working from home who sustain our worship and our ministry. For the St. Marlborough Healing and Counselling Centre, for its psychotherapists and psychiatrists, for the work that they continue to do. For the Marlborough Health Centre, for its patients and for the doctors and nurses and staff working there. We pray for the hospitals, the surgeries, the medical institutions of this parish, especially for the London Clinic and King Edward VII's Hospital, for our church's schools, the Royal Academy of Music, for Westminster University and Regent's University, for our young church members and their families, and for all who worship with us from their homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our patron, Her Majesty the Queen, and for the Royal Family, for Her Majesty's Government, for the National Health Service and all who are battling COVID-19. We pray for the countries of the Commonwealth, the United Nations, and the World Health Organization, for all scientists and researchers and those who are seeking to find a cure for this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and for the parish's commercial, financial and business life. For all who are worried about their businesses and their work. For all who are seeking employment. For those unable to work, for the sick and all who have been disabled by COVID-19. We pray for the great estates which surround us here in Marylebone, for their tenants and for all who come into this part of London to work in these strange and anxious days. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering with COVID-19 and all who are sick. 
We pray for Liam and all at Northwick Park Hospital, for Hugh and all at Charing Cross, for Emma and all at UCLH. We pray for June and Hannah and for all who work in intensive care units. For all who mourn the loss of loved ones and have not been able to be with them at their times of death or to be with them at the times of their funerals. And for those who have asked us to pray for them, including Royston, Jill, Ron, Lewis, Lee and Oscar, Gideon, Joyce, Mia, Mark, Evelyn, Fred and Sumbo, Lola, Peter, Jean, Trevor and Alison, Sabina, Constance, Lloyd, Graham, Adam, Brian, Cheryl, Paul and Gillian. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own families and for our friends, for all the people and situations that we carry in our hearts before God. And we pray for ourselves, that God will meet us and them at our points of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to God's gracious love and mercy all who have died, among them Janet, Renee and Maria. We commend to God's mercy the souls of those whom we remember at this time of year, among them Reg Gagney. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Philip and St. James and all the saints, we commend ourselves and those for whom we pray to God's unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So. He fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because in his victory over the grave a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended, a broken world is being renewed, and humanity is once again made whole. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, 
and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary St. Peter, St. Philip, St. James, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Let us pray. O 
Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the Apostles, with a wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the Gospel, by the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and who lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.